Hello and welcome back. Today's video is a particularly important one because today's video is about algorithms. Maybe I don't need to convince you of the importance of algorithms. If you are aware of how companies coding interviews are generally formatted, you are probably aware that the sort of problems they ask in all the interviews are related to data structures and algorithms. In my previous video in the series, we went through the first part of this equation, which is data structures. And today, by popular demand, we will be covering the second part, which is algorithms. As in my previous video, the goal of this video is to give you an intuitive understanding of what algorithms are, why we need to study them, why companies care so much about algorithms that literally the entire recruiting process is structured around testing these topics. And of course, as you know on the channel, we always leave things off with practical steps that you can take and the things that you need to do beyond this video to master these topics. I think this could be one of the most important videos that you watch about algorithms because as I always say, the most important aspect about learning anything to me is being excited about it. And algorithms and data structures are the kind of thing that most people don't quite understand why they are so important. And that is probably actually the thing that is holding you back the most. In fact, I think algorithms and data structures are some of the most beautiful things about coding and computer science. And I hope that with this video, I can give you a glimpse of this beauty and why I appreciate them so much so that you can actually start enjoying the process of learning them and therefore wanting to learn them more. So what is an algorithm? An algorithm is a series of steps to perform some action to reach some goal. We have some input, so some data that we want to do something to and we need to figure out what are the logical steps that we need to tell the computer to do to reach the output that we desire. You can think of designing a series of steps to complete really anything. You can think about a series of steps to get from your house to the gym, for example. I was reading about this. The idea of algorithms is like a thousand years old. So where do computers then come in? Well, the study of computer algorithms is just about applying computer resources to solve mathematical operations or problems we want to solve instead of using the human brain to solve them. And the advantage that computers have is that computers can perform these operations blindingly fast. So that is really where computers come in. But before we go deeper into specifically computer algorithms, there's a great book about this idea of sort of applying algorithmic thinking to your everyday life. It's called Algorithms to Live By. At least I recommend reading a summary of it. And an excellent way to get a really good summary is actually today's video sponsor, Shortform. Shortform is the absolute best way I've found to get really high quality book summaries. And the thing about Shortform, the summaries are not just book summaries. They're more like study guides with like in-depth analysis of the book. They include a short version of the summary if you just want to get the main ideas, plus chapter by chapter summaries, including interactive exercises to actually apply the ideas of the book. When you look at a book, it can be difficult to tell whether that book is actually worth reading. And so what I often do, first, before reading a book, I will go read the short form guide of that book. And then based on that, I will decide whether the ideas of the book are actually something that I want to, to go deeper into by reading or listening to the entire book. For example, for me, some of my favorite categories of books that they have are technology, self-improvement, business, entrepreneurship, productivity. And in addition, if you are a subscriber to short form, you can actually vote on the next book that you would like them to make a summary of. And because Shortform are sponsoring this video, you are in luck because you can go to the link in the description and get a five day unlimited access free trial as well as an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription. Thank you for Shortform for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into the meat of algorithms. The big question I had in the beginning and I just couldn't really understand is if computers are so incredibly fast, why does it even matter what kind of algorithms we design? Why do we care so much about the speed of algorithms and like studying the theory of like optimizing algorithms a lot because our computers are so fast, right? But when you think about sorting algorithms, for example, there's also problems you might think about are like sorting a hundred numbers or something. But when it comes to computer science and programming, those are actually not the interesting problems. Any interesting problem in the 
domain of computer science and it's like in the cutting edge it's something where the input size is ridiculously big when you think about companies like google and facebook the data sizes that they run these algorithms with are not like a hundred or a thousand items they can be like billions and billions and billions in these scales even with the power of computers that we have today how your algorithm is designed as in how fast it is and how much memory it consumes really starts to matter a lot so simply by designing a faster algorithm we can number one solve much bigger problems and number two we can literally like achieve the same performance gains in our technology as like a decade worth of computer processor speed improvement so in general about algorithms the things we care about are the speed at which it runs as well as the memory that it uses so at the very 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 low level we can think of the speed of an algorithm just as how many instructions does it have to complete if we can design an algorithm to do the same thing using 10 instructions or doing 100 instructions the algorithm that we have designed that can run it using 10 instructions is going to be faster at the very very low level that is what we really mean but as you'll see in a moment this is actually a kind of impractical way of actually thinking about it okay so let's just think about a very basic algorithm let's say you have a book and you want to find a specific page in a book let's say you want to tell someone to find page 100 in the book how might you go about doing that well one very naive approach might be to just start opening page one after the other and the logical instructions will be open page see if the page is page 100 if it is you found it and you've completed the algorithm if it's not you open the next page is this page 100 no move on to the next page is this page 100 no move on to the next page and this might sound a bit ridiculous but actually if you do this 100 times eventually you will reach page 100 and you can say yes is this page 100 yes it is page 100 even though like intuitively to you as a human this seems like a very stupid idea it does actually work so what is actually wrong with this algorithm it's very slow right and there's probably a much better way to do this. We can use our idea from before of thinking about the amount of instructions we need to complete to reach our goal. So you might say that in this particular case, the running time of our algorithm was a hundred iterations or hundred instructions. But the thing here is that saying that this algorithm has a runtime of a hundred instructions is not very helpful because that depends on this very specific case of us wanting to find page 100. What if I had told you to find page two? In that case, you would open page one and be like, is this page two? No, move on to the next page. Is this page two? Yes, we have found the solution. So in this case, the running time would only be two. But you might think of the worst case where I tell you to find the very last page of the book. We have 696 pages in this Cracking the Coding interview book. It's a great book, by the way. Well, in this case, we would have to complete 696 iterations to find the number. And so how could we just generalize this idea of the running time in this particular algorithm? Well, computer scientists are actually quite pessimistic because whenever we analyze algorithms, we are always, first of all, thinking about the worst possible case. We assume that we are the unluckiest people and we always get the absolute worst case possible. So that is why in computer science, when we analyze algorithms, we would say that the big O running time, AKA the worst case running time is 696. But what if we had a different book? What if we had instead this book? It's the Leonardo da Vinci biography. This one has 599 pages. So in the case of this book, the same algorithm would have a running time of big O 597. But this is also not very helpful because now, even though we've sort of generalized in terms of thinking about the worst case, our running time still depends on the actual book. So how can we generalize the running time of this particular search algorithm, which is called a linear search, by the way, into any problem, so any book. And the way we think about this in computer science is in terms of the input size. So in this case, we think about the running time of the algorithm in terms of how much it scales when we increase the size of the book. So let's say we had a book that was a thousand pages long. How does the running time of the algorithm scale relative to the size of the problem? And in this case, it actually scales linearly. For every page we add to the book, 
the running time of our algorithm increases by one. Because remember, we're always thinking about the absolute worst case. So in computer science lingo, our algorithm has a linear running time, or in other words, a running time of O of N, where N is the size of the problem. And the reason again why we care about the input size so much is because Google's, the Facebooks, they have billions and billions and billions of data points. So for this book, page finding algorithm, how can we find an algorithm that's perhaps much faster than just opening a page one at a time? You might already intuitively think about, surely it doesn't make sense to start even looking at the first pages because you know that it's not gonna be on the first page, right? So you might just sort of estimate an opening somewhere over here, I actually landed on 149, which is a pretty good guess. And then you know that because page 100, it's less than 149. We can just open it somewhere over here, slightly behind it, and then eventually we find page 100. And if I told you to do this, that's probably how you would do it, right? And it turns out that we can actually instruct the computer to do it almost like this. In general, what we can tell the computer to do, let's say just in the first iteration, let's tell our computer to always try the middle page, to open it from the very middle of the book. So in this case, it's gonna open it on page 336. What can we then do afterwards? Well, we can always check very quickly using one instruction is, is the page we're looking for before the one we opened or is it after the one we opened? 100 is less than 336. So in the next iteration, what if we tell the computer to then open it on the middle of the left section of the book? And this time we're opening on page 150, just approximating. And again, we know that is our page 100 less than 150 or more than 150? We can again just forget about the entirety rest of the book here and just focus on the left side of 150 because we know that what we're looking for is going to be in here. And again, we tell the computer to open it again now on the middle of this portion of the book, which will be on page 75. Is 100 more than 75 or is it less than 75? What well, is more than 75? So at this point, we can just open it in the middle of 75, 150, and just through this iterative process, we are going to get to our solution much, much, much faster. So essentially in every instruction, we are actually reducing the problem size by half and sort of getting closer and closer to the solution. And it turns out that the running time of this algorithm is something called log n. And the log is something that can be a bit confusing probably, but essentially all that log n means, as we double the size of the book, the amount of instructions we have to do, so that the running time of the algorithm would only go up by one instruction. Because if you think about it, we have two books. When we double the size of the input in our binary search algorithm, where we're always opening the middle page, it only adds one more step. Because in this case, we would open it in the middle of these two, so in here. And then we can just say, well, is it to the right or is it to the left? Let's say it's to the left. So then we can literally just forget about this other half of the problem entirely. And now we're back in the same stage where we started out before with just this one or this half of the book. And you can see that even in this very small case, using this algorithm is much, much faster. You would never use the first one because it's so much slower. And you can imagine a similar problem like this where we need to find a particular data point from a list of like billions and billions and billions and billions. The difference that this better algorithm makes can literally shorten the running time by like weeks or months, I think I've seen. So that is really why we care so much about designing fast algorithms. And another very common problem that a lot of algorithm courses start with at first is sorting. And I've actually coded up a visualization that really shows the difference between different kinds of algorithm. I'm not gonna show the implementation in this or anything, but you can go to the description and find it if you want. In here, we have a very slow algorithm that scales at O of N squared. So as the input size doubles, it's gonna go up by two squared. So it's actually even worse than the linear time thing that we tried before. 2,000 years later. And you can see that it's taking quite a while. Whereas if you use a more optimized algorithm called Merge Sort, where again, you will end up studying the details of this later in, in whatever course you decide to follow, this algorithm runs on n times log n, which is actually much, much faster than n squared. So I hope now you're sort of starting to see why companies actually put so much emphasis on hiring people who understand algorithms, who understand how to write good algorithms for their very, very big problems 
that they solve at the companies. In terms of practical next steps for you to do if you want to understand this topic, if you enjoyed this video, first of all, leave a like because I actually find data structure algorithms quite exciting and I really enjoy teaching them and talking about them, but I will only do it if you guys really want me to do them. So if you want to see that, go leave a like down below and go leave a comment on the specific topic about algorithms and data structures that you would like to see next. But first of all, if you haven't done CS50 yet, and specifically their third lecture, I'm gonna leave the third lecture of CS50 in the description below, it's a YouTube video. That lecture is specifically on algorithms and it essentially teaches what I've taught you in this video, except it's the two hour version and probably a much, much better explained that I could ever explain. But obviously even that is not gonna be enough to pass interviews, so what I would do is just pick any popular course on data structures and algorithms. It teaches you the theory of the most important algorithms and data structures that you will need in the interviews. One that I did personally for myself was Zero to Mastery's Master the Coding Interview Bootcamp. Zero to Mastery is a coding course platform that's essentially like a subscription model where instead of paying for a Netflix subscription, you can pay for a Zero to Mastery subscription and get access to the like 60 different coding courses on a lot of different areas. I've done a bunch of them. Those are really good. Uh, the teaching style is really engaging. If you are interested in sort of a more academic and probably a more rigorous approach, there's two specific Coursera specializations that you can look at. I've actually done both of them. The first one is the Stanford Algorithm Specialization. That's really the most theoretical approach that you'll probably find online. Quite math heavy, but it's gonna give you a very, very rigorous understanding. The other one is the Princeton Algorithms 1 and Algorithms 2 specializations. I also use the textbooks. That one is Java-based. The other specialization actually doesn't base you on any specific programming language because but they rather just go through things at the conceptual and a mathematical level. And of that, something like cracking the coding interview is actually a very good book to get sort of an, a review slash an overview of the topics that you need for interviews plus a lot of practice problems but I would not choose this first I would choose one of the three other courses to give you the theory and the understanding and then after that I would go for something like this because this is more like a practice book something that you want to use to prepare like right before your interviews and obviously beyond that lead code you don't need to pay for the premium I've never paid for the premium just keep doing a lot of lead code problems so that is that this is probably a very long video already. If you haven't seen my first part to this series on data structures, absolutely go watch it now. Other than that, I have this other video where I talk about my step-by-step -step plan of how I personally learned all these topics. So go watch one of these videos next and I'll see you in the next one.